something you really look towards the future, uh, or you will be doing in your professional career. Um, I mean, like one of my friends last week, she had a whole day of lectures about what she would be doing next, sort of interview techniques, sort of her vocational training year. Um, I'm just trying to see what else I wrote on the slide. Uh, yeah. So, um, in, at the end of year four, at the beginning of year five, you should get a chance to take an elective, um, which is sort of like a group study and you can you know, go with that um, to you know, study something which you um, specifically want to do in detail. And there's also a chance to do an interface degree after year two, three, or four. Um, again, putting in a different subject, taking year out, and sort of seeing uh, what you think what you are interested in. Again, it's mainly um, 3A to A level and um, a, uh, A at AS level. You need to have chemistry and biology. And um, uh, yeah, you need to have chemistry and biology and what it says here is that uh, further maths is acceptable at AS level only. Um, again, I have actually written all of these um, details, just copy and paste them from the website onto the presentation. Unfortunately, you can't see it now, but if you go onto the King's website, Okay, so in terms of UCAS, what you need to include on there? You need to include scholastic activities, community activities, general activities and interests, work shadowing slash observation, paid slash voluntary work, um, and uh, the UK capture you need to think about and why not dexterity. So scholastic, scholastic activities are activities which you sort of do in school, any sort of clubs which you're a member of, and any, so like for example, if you're in the head girl team or if you do um, anything else within school. Um, community activities, if you're part of like, religious organisations, for example, um, general activities of interest will be anything that you do in your spare time, your hobbies. Um, Pay slash voluntary work if you're working at the moment or if you do any voluntary work in, let's say, um, a care home or anything like that. And um, in terms of the UK CAT, it's, it's one of the factors which is considered at interview. Um, Adults will tell you more about that. And also, with your mind dexterity, you need to um, bring something with you, preferably at interview, which you can show to the interviewers. Um, uh, for example, if you, if you do a uh, meeting, for example, or photography. <laughs> um, as a university, in terms of dental applications, King's is very, very heavy on the UK CAT. Um, normally, they just rank everyone straight out by the UK CAT and interview from there. Um, yeah, that's the main thing. Is just as general advice for the UK CAT for those of you that haven't done it. It's not one of those things like for A level where you can revise two weeks before and still come out with a top mark. You actually do need to prepare for a good solid three, four weeks roughly. Three, four weeks for an advanced in practice questions, otherwise you will find that there will be issues on the day. Um, okay, um, the King's interview, the reason you changed it to from a panel interview, which is a traditional interview that most universities do, to um, a multiple mini interview system. So you have five different stations, five different interviewers, and you go five minutes to each interviewer. Um, on the plus side, you can repeat the same thing to every single interviewer, and they will know about it. So it's less pressure that way. Um, the King's interview itself, it does have an ethical scenario as to all other dental institutes, but you get 10 minutes beforehand to prepare for it and one of your stations will be an ethical scenario. Um, the King's interview mainly questions-wise, it's nothing really to do with dentistry per se, it's more to do with you yourself as a person, and they just want to find out about your personality and stuff like that. So just make sure you're a shiny example in your community, oh, yes. and they will like you. <laughs> <laughs> so, Okay, um, so if there are any questions, then uh, feel free to ask either myself or um, our partner at the end. Um, well, I don't know if this is actually going to work, but importantly, if it does, then we have just a short clip. Um, let's just take a look. <laughs>
I chose psych dentistry because I like working with patients, dealing with people really exciting me, and not only the patients that you treat, but um, involving in teamwork as well in the team environment. It's a really good career. It's got good career progression. For me, it's the perfect combination of a clinical scenario as well as working in a team with some artistic flair, and you've got a real science brought into it as well. I enjoy the medical aspects of sciences and uh, I particularly enjoy art and I think no other degree uh, incorporates both of those together better. Once you get to second year and you actually see the patients and actually talking to them and taking their history and using the notes, you actually feel like a real patient which is definitely the best part of it. You can get some confidence to eat, to speak, to socialise. Uh, that to me is a lot of professional fulfilment. Coming to King's, you've got a big student population, so there's lots of clubs, lots of societies, lots of activities, something there for everyone. Meeting new people you have never met before from all around the world. Hello, everyone. My name is Jacob. I'm 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 Jacob